We're back. The greatest podcast of all time. Welcome to my esteemed listeners and welcome to my esteemed YouTube or Odyssey audience as well. Perhaps you are actually not a listener, a subscriber to The Greatest Podcast. I decided to post the first half of this fine episode publicly because I don't intend to talk about anything overly spicy. Not spicy, but good stuff nonetheless. So welcome everyone. I have, as is my custom, a few updates to give. And these updates concerning training, epic training, they are highly related to the topic at hand. And as you see in the title, the topic is, of course, elemental magic. Therefore, I thought to first define magic. What do I mean with magic? And I will quote a certain degenerate, perhaps you know of him, Alistair Crowley. And he said, magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. So that is a good definition of magic, and that is spelled with a K at the end, and he did that to distinguish between magic as you perhaps encounter in fantasy literature or something like that. So when we're talking about magic, when I talk about magic, it is more about mental techniques, to use a different term. So it's not about magic as you would see it in Harry Potter or something like that, but rather about using your will to make some sort of change and the change can be completely in the subjective so as i mentioned in demigod mentality which will be out in a few weeks the subjective universe it is what takes place in your mind basically your connection to god to the metaphysical universe and then you have of course the physical so the physical is if you touch your hand that is a physical sensation and if we're talking about the metaphysical sensation is if you do something in your mind with your will that can later on have an impact on the physical so to take an example and this is an example i use in demigod mentality as well if you first decide to make a change with your will in your mind so in your subjective universe you say to yourself I am a proud gentleman and I walk with my back straight. So that is a change first taking place in your subjective, in your mind, in your metaphysical. Then that influences you to walk with a straight posture and walking with a straight posture will have actual physical, uh, even hormonal uh, positive changes to you. So your body language, it will have an impact and the change in body language, it can come about as a result of you making a change in your mind basically so that can be a good explanation of what magic is what we mean with magic when we talk about it here and when i write about it and stuff like that now i know some people they chimp whenever i talk about magic especially christians and uh, you know immediately they chimp so i posted a book review and i posted to instagram as well that these are the points i elaborate on in my book review and then they started to chimp there and commented stuff without even reading the um, the book review something to keep in mind as well if you're a content creator that sometimes or quite often actually that many individuals they react upon an image so they don't even take the time to read anything they just immediately give um, they immediately express their opinion on something without actually taking the time to read the context now of course i am quite fortunate in that i have a quite above average intelligence i would say i would humbly say that about my own audience so it's not often it happens but sometimes it does happen so that is hopefully a somewhat good definition of magic and i will quote again here alistair crowley Magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Now, of course, it must be noted that Aleister Crowley was a true degenerate in the the truest sense of the word. So he can also be used as an example of how it can go, uh, how life can treat you if you take too many drugs, if you become a drug addict. Now, I know there are individuals who they use the quest for enlightenment or the magical quest as an excuse to take a lot of drugs now there are of course individuals of the priest archetype who should in some cases i'm not saying that anyone should do anything illegal or do anything harmful uh, but there are instances if you have a shaman for example who he wants to take some sort of 
substance to reach a different dimension. In some cases, in very few cases, that can be reasonable, but for most individuals, if they use it, if they take ayahuasca as an excuse to commune with spirits, but in all actuality, they they might just be drug addicts. So for the absolute majority of individuals, it's best to just stay clear of these things. Speaking of which, and this is something I will make a separate video on, I will urge caution when it comes to things like deeper magical operations and astral travel stuff like that because if you don't if you don't really know what you're doing you don't know what sort of entities you might invite so it can be good to stay clear of it and if i if i want to say something nice about christianity it's actually that since they usually have a quite strict line against magic it can be good for most individuals so good for most individuals but not so good for spiritual seekers Anyway, on to another definition of magic. You can use another example. So when I say that I train MMA, I use MMA as a term to encompass all martial arts, basically. So I can say that I train MMA, but over the last few months, maybe I have only trained boxing, maybe I've only trained a certain part of MMA, but I still label it as MMA because it's ultimately the aim of it. So that can be something we can use for magic as well, that you can encompass many different things within magic. So you can have you know, mental techniques, meditations, astral travel, uh, doing some sort of a change in consciousness, anything like that, or just participating in, a, in some sort of ritual. So when I say magic, I mean that in a very broad sense. And of course, the, the term itself, it's not particularly specific, so everyone can you know, have a different definition of it. But when I say it, it's a very, very broad term I use for most things that have to do with any change in your subjective universe. So what's going on in your your own mind, basically. And of course, what goes on in your mind, it can influence the um, first and foremost you as a person, and therefore it can also influence the universe. So something to keep in mind as well is that everything is connected, and that is why these things work. So if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in the metaphysical, the hintere Welt, if you don't believe in any of these things, then yeah, all of these things, they won't make much sense. But uh, if you do have an appreciation of uh, the metaphysical side of the world, then many of these things, they will make a lot more sense. Now, if you don't like to use the term magic because you think it sounds too unacademic or too unspecific or too vague or whatever it might be, you can simply replace the term magic with mental techniques. So we're talking about now in this fine episode, I've titled it Elemental Magic, but you can, in your mind, you can retitle it, should you wish, you can retitle it to Mental Techniques for Optimal Performance in Cognitive and Athletic Endeavors, something like that. So anyway, I have hopefully made myself somewhat clear at least of course it's a hard task to define magic but uh, that is at least what i mean so do keep that in mind for future episodes and videos and uh, posts and everything like that now on to the first training update a very glorious one indeed so we had bohemund cup 2 a few days ago, and it was even better than the first. The first one, as I said earlier in summer, it was an absolutely great day. We had three events. So we had chins, dips, and weighted chins. So max repetition for all of these events. And uh, yeah, it was just so fun. The manas energy, it was so high. The vibe was so good. And uh, I was just filled with joy and inspiration and motivation afterwards so i thought the only reasonable course of action is to make another one so therefore we had bohemond cup 2 a few days ago and we had two additional events in the competition so we had shot putt if that's how you pronounce it I actually had to search for the proper translation of it kul stötning in swedish so that's when you throw a ball a heavy ball so that is one of the new events i thought add for optimal olympian feels and then we had a sprint as well which was 
really nice. I used to be quite fast back in the day running, so I thought I would have the event, but Linus, the the winner of the first Bohemian Cup, he mogged me in the sprint. So I got sprint mogged. I came in second at least. I must train my sprints so I will have him for the third competition. Really fun at least. So I added that event as well to get that ancient Greek Olympian athletic uh, competition feel to it. So I don't want these competitions to only be about gym exercises but are... An overall athletic, well-trained, health-oriented competition. And then for future events, I will see what more fun things. Perhaps a javelin throw and uh, some other Olympian exercises. We will see. But uh, super nice day. Thank you to those of you who showed up. It was a very nice day and I was full of um, joy afterwards. And this also brings me to a related note on magic. So I said Manas energy. Manas is a rune in the Elder Futhark and it is related to the Menerbund or the men of the tribe. So you have a certain energy which, and this is something I've talked about many times before, that my athletic performance is increased greatly when I have Herios. Herios means members of one's own group in Proto-Indo-European. So in plain English, when my guys are there and I have that presence of them, then I perform a lot better. And I could definitely see this during this particular competition. So to use an example, a few days before the competition, I did some bodyweight chins and I did 15 repetitions and it felt quite heavy indeed. And during the competition itself, I did no less than 26 chins at a body weight of 95 kilos. Now, I'm not saying this to extol my own athletic prowess. I am saying this to explain how much this manas energy, this magical energy, can actually impact uh, an athletic performance. For the record, I also did 37 dips. And yeah, of course, as you all know, I'm quite fit and well-trained and I have trained a lot of calisthenics over all of these years, everything like that. But the difference in performance between um, a session when I'm alone and a session where I have, or a competition where I have the presence of 10 guys in this case on my side, it's a huge difference. And I can only attribute that difference to these metaphysical energies so I will of course need to study this more I will experiment more with different exercises and different configurations of uh, high thumos guys and everything like that but it's super interesting and of course do try this yourself if you have good friends that you can train with if you have a max repetition you want to do if you want to set a PR in a powerlifting exercise or a max uh, new record for chins or dips do try when you have this good high thumos atmosphere with guys on your own side it will make a world of a difference and perhaps you remember i talked about this last year as well when i did a cycle of small of junior that it felt quite heavy and i actually had to wait because i was alone at the gym and i had to wait until some older Swedish men, uh, you know, high thumos, they aren't explicitly on my side, but I can only suppose they appreciate what I do. Anyway, they came in, big grizzly, older, big Swedish grizzly bear type men. They came in, just, um, yeah, they spotted me, of course, but the it wasn't the spot I needed, it was the manas energy, just having them there to uh, send those metaphysical energies. So it might sound a bit schizo hippie posting here but it's absolutely legit and i would say that do try it out do check it out help me in my study of magic here my gym magical studies of optimizing athletic performance so something you can keep in mind when we're talking about this manas energies and uh this menerbund magic everything like that to put it in plain english again just view it as you have your good friends nearby or individuals on the same side as you nearby and you know within a few meters within line of sight and you can envision um, a stream of energy 
connecting you and if you have a good few guys say four or five or even only two or three that will increase your own power within you now of course you don't need to overthink it if uh, if i can only summarize it i can say train with good high thumos friends and something very important to keep in mind here you can't drag any low thumos guy to the gym and expect them to supply you with good energies so this manas energy i'm talking about this menerbund magic it can only work if the guys you surround yourself with are actually high thumos positive high vibration so you can't you know drag an unwilling low thumos guy to the gym and expect to be able to tap into his energies so you need guys who are on a certain level they are also enthusiastic about life they have a certain amount of divine energy within them they are on your side so again you can't go into a normie gym and surround yourself with normies you don't have any connection to uh, or individuals who do not really have any divine spark within them so do find good high thumos friends surround yourself with them and you will benefit greatly and of course they will benefit from you as well so both gain everyone gains from it in this situation now this brings me to my second training update big shout out to my man olympio perhaps you saw i posted to twitter or should i say x now as it's now known and also to instagram i posted his um, deadlift he did a pr 230 kilo deadlift a very respectable weight indeed so i posted me giving him a hug afterwards and uh, i reposted his the lift itself and now this is a perfect example of using will to create change so of course olympio big strong guy he has trained very hard in portugal um so the physical preparation already in place but what was so interesting with this lift is that it was definitely the will that made a difference and something to keep in mind here as well that the will can only do so much but it can make a difference when you already have prepared well enough in many other ways so for athletic performance say a deadlift you have so many different factors coming into play you have of course how long have you trained how much have you progressed how strong are you what physical powers do you have how strong is your body so that is purely within the physical realm and then other factors like how much have you slept how well have you eaten these things they matter greatly so never overestimate the magical or metaphysical side of things you also need to train your physical but you should also not underestimate the mental aspect so the metaphysical or magical aspect of it also willpower in this sense and i saw on olympio now of course he was on vacation here in sweden usually trains in portugal where he lives uh, and when you're on vacation you're never as you know strong as you are when you're in your everyday routine back in your own gym so being able to set a PR when you're out like this, it's quite spectacular. And I would say that he, of course, it was with me and his fair maiden. So he had the support of both of us and he really wanted to, he really wanted to get this PR. So I could see that the deciding factor was that willpower. So there you can see magic in, in effect, if we are to use that term magic. Magic in effect to get a PR in the gym because the willpower, it was the thing that pushed over the top so it can definitely make a difference when it's only a few percent that will determine if you get the lift or you do not get the lift so that's something to keep in mind as well when we're talking about strength training most of it it's about preparation you're you know having a good schedule that you have followed for a good while you eat well you sleep well but then also the mental aspect and for me of course it's super interesting especially since i've trained so long and i look at what sort of things what sort of factors can you do to optimize your performance so that was my second training update now my third training update and art update and video update and uh, everything like that you know of course that i have said i have promised for a long time now that uh classical training video is coming out and it will be out in a few days now hopefully you will see it and you will use it as inspiration to train yourself and 
And I thought to mention it because when we're talking about elemental magic, and I will introduce the elements and how you can use them in MMA soon, I will just uh, talk about this particular sequence that I posted to X and Instagram. So perhaps you've seen it, otherwise you can look at it in the longer video to come. This is traditional Dutch kickboxing, so it's a lot more fluid than traditional Muay Thai and of course you use more limbs than you do in Western boxing, so regular boxing. So if you look at that sequence you can see that I don't focus so much on power or anything like that, I'm focused on, on being fluid, of making a long combination of getting the entire body to flow basically. So when you're doing this type of combination and Dutch kickboxers they are famous for having these good long combinations of just flowing body movements and of course this is something you can envision when you train regular boxing as well especially when you do these longer combinations with some slips and some side steps and you know you know being a hard target to hit so think of yourself as being fluid like water can be applied in uh, grappling as well. Now I haven't tried grappling with the mentality of the water magic element yet. I will experiment a bit with it. But uh, yeah, you can think of it as well when you grapple to be fluid in that sense. Then you can add on the other elements which we'll get back, which we'll get into in just a bit. Now the elements themselves. So the four elements, so you have air, fire, water and earth. They have been trusted companions in Western thought for a very long time, a very long time indeed, dating back to the good old Greeks, the ancient Hellenes. And the elements, they haven't only been something to take into consideration in regard to magic and uh, spirituality and stuff like that, but also in uh, the scientific history of the West and something to highlight here as well, I usually do highlight it in my book reviews, is that the occult masters of the past, the magicians of the past, they have also often been scientists. So you have Paracelsus, take an example, and he can be described, and I quote from Wikipedia of all places, but it's a good quote anyway. So Paracelsus is widely held to be the father of chemical medicine, chemotherapy, and the science of toxicology. So someone who was very into the occult, into magic, to use that term again, and also who did contribute greatly to the, the scientific progress of the West, to use that term. So when we're talking about the elements, they have been present in the scientific journey of the West as well. But now in this particular episode, we're concentrating on the magical aspect of the four elements. Now, in preparation of this fine episode, and for my own development as well, I have read a book titled Practical Elemental Magic. Magic spelled with a K at the end, again, to distinguish it from magic as you might see in fantasy literature and stuff like that. So therefore you see magic spelled with a K every once in a while. Now, it's written by David Rankin and Sorita de Est, if I pronounce that correctly. You must excuse me for not being fluent in French. This is highly barbaric of me. So anyway, it's a short, concise, practical book, which I can recommend for anyone interested in the matter. So in this book, I found a few meditation techniques. So some workings you can do. And I have taken a few weeks to experiment a bit with them. And I would say that they are quite good indeed. So I did something similar as... I did with the runes, so the runes of the Elder Futhark, as I've mentioned before, I simply took a week at a time to meditate on them and to see if I could get some insights. And this was a highly fruitful endeavor, as you will see in Demigod Mentality, I have a whole chapter dedicated to the runes. Now, finally, on to the main topic of this fine episode, the elements themselves. How can we use these four elements to improve our lives, our MMA game, our parenting game, our business game, our education game, whatever it is, we use, of course, magic to improve our lives. And if someone claims to be powerful in magic but doesn't really have any 
life success to speak of, then uh, yeah, the magical power probably isn't there. So that said, we turn to the book, the aforementioned book, Practical Elemental Magic, Working the Magic of the Four Elements in the Western Mystery Tradition. Now, if you have read all of my book reviews, I salute you if you are an enjoyer of the book reviews. These are my most astute and esteemed disciples. So anyway, you know that I always say whenever I read a book, I appreciate practical instructions if you have some sort of meditation technique. And this book, which I can actually recommend, it's a nice, concise, good book. And in chapter 12, they introduce the elemental pyramids. So it contains four meditation techniques or magical workings, we could call it, uh, one for each element then. And I have used this uh, pyramids when I have meditated upon the elements. So similar again as to the runes and I've spent two weeks on each element, which is of course not enough to gain, you know, the full understanding of them. You have to continuously work with them and you have to apply them in practice. So what I've done Again, to refer to the training video, the boxing and Thai boxing, or rather Dutch kickboxing, is that I've tried to implement these um, teachings, these mental techniques that are presented via these uh, pyramid workings. And also to yet again refer back to Bohemund Cup 2 and the chins and dips, I said it was so much easier uh, to do chins, for example. So that is primarily the manas energy but also a touch of air element energy there that you feel like the wind also when you sprint you feel like the wind or when you punch you do striking pad work for example you feel fast as the wind so you use this sort of mental images you conjure them in your mind to improve your athletic performance or to take another example you have in the water element which is a bit more a feminine element but also good for us men especially for fathers you gain a sort of you can gain a uh, deeper patience with your children, which is great. So I'll get into this in just a bit. The first element I want to talk about is air, and that's because that was the first elemental pyramid that was presented in this particular book. So I will try to explain the meditation technique, and you can perhaps try it. Now I am presenting these meditation techniques as I have used them, so they look a bit different in the book, and of course it's highly subjective so you can do whatever you wish this is just my take on the matter how i did these meditation techniques during my daily meditation so when i do meditate i usually start with wim hof breathing and then i go into some sort of deeper meditation and in this case using this meditation techniques so a pyramid basically envision yourself sitting in a pyramid or it's supposed to become a pyramid when you have created lines via your thoughts. So I am paraphrasing from the book now regarding the air pyramid working. So see yourself in a sky blue square whose corners are in the east, south, west and north. In the first corner in the east is the first of the four powers of the air, that of clarity. See the energy of clarity as a sky blue feather in the eastern corner glowing with an inner vibrancy as it embodies the clarity of the beliefs and practices that you live by. Concentrate on focusing the energy of clarity in the eastern corner of the square. Clarity produces realization and inspiration, which is not static, so move the clarity to the second corner of the square in the south. So the first power you're supposed to meditate upon, you're trying to channel that energy within yourself, is clarity. So this can be very good to invoke before something that has to do with your cognitive performance. So clarity, it can be good if you're trying to study the history of the Normans in the South, for example, as I did, you're trying to gain clarity over a complex situation. So when you focus that, just as you would focus on fluidity of water when you do Dutch kickboxing, now in a more cognitive sense, you're trying to focus the energy of clarity when it comes to a complex geopolitical situation in uh, southern Italy during the 1100s, for example. So that is the first thing you can focus on and you can envision a blue feather, a sky blue feather in the eastern corner. And then you move your focus 
to the south and the clarity is transformed into the second quality of the air, that of inspiration. And you can view the power of inspiration as a white cloud on a sky blue background. So then when you have meditated upon that, you can envision that cloud in some sort of nice way, a beautiful cloud on a sky blue background. And then you move your focus to the third corner in the west and then inspiration is transformed into joy. And I quote from the book, joy is an expression of clarity and inspiration. The joy of doing the right actions, taking pleasure in your life and path. See the cloud on the sky blue background change into a sky blue disc radiating sky blue rays outwards. Focus on gathering the energy of joy in the third corner of the square in the west. Now on a personal note, I actually think of Glorfindel when I meditate upon joy. There is the absolutely epic quote. You have probably read it. I've posted it a good few times. I, it's one of my favorite quotes by good old Tolkien and he describes Glorfindel thus. Glorfindel was tall and straight. His hair was of shining gold. His face fair and young and fearless and full of joy. His eyes were bright and keen and his voice like music. On his brow sat wisdom and in his hand was strength. I have a video planned where I will talk about the poetry of Tolkien, so you will hear me recite this fine passage in a coming video. So that is at least the energy I am trying to invoke within myself when I meditate upon the air element of joy. I envision Glorfindel and as I see him in my mind's eye with joy. And this is of course super important for many things, especially when it comes to social interaction. If you do try to be a happy and joyous person, you will spread joy to others and that will make you liked and you will like the world more in turn. So it's a very powerful uh, magic technique you can use on yourself to just try to invoke joy and try to find the good things in life, try to find joy in everything. Now, of course, I've talked a lot about this, you know, finding the white pills and trying to dispel the black pills. So we can go on about this for, yeah, for a long time, talking about how you can conjure the image of Glorfindel and he defeats the demons of black pills in your mind. So very powerful stuff indeed. Of course, I will continue to experiment with this, but as it feels right now, I can definitely use this mental technique to enhance my mood, especially since, you know, I've had some ups and downs as of late, but I can always channel the energy of joy in my life and uh, yeah, feel better for it. And now from the corner in the west, we move to the corner in the north and joy is transformed into understanding. Now in the book it says wisdom, but I asked my man, shout out Ginrunar, and he said that understanding is a better term to use here for this particular working. So in the north, joy is transformed into understanding. And this again, if you can combine this with clarity, it becomes very powerful indeed, especially if you try to channel this energy when you are trying to figure something out. Again, to use the example of the Normans. So I used this mental technique when I tried to make the Norman episodes. Hopefully they were informative and I managed to present the their story and the geopolitical situation, the situation with the different ethnicities in southern Italy and Sicily at the time in a clear way. So that is at least how I tried to approach that topic. I'm not so powerful as I can explain the papal intrigues and uh, I'm not sure how interesting that would be. I'm leaving that for maybe another time if I get super enthusiastic about medieval pope history. It's quite interesting but I'm not sure how how clear I could have made the episodes. So many different intrigues are going into each other. So anyway, main point, you can use this energies, you can channel these energies when you have a cognitive challenge in front of you. So some workings you can do that are related to athletic performance and some of these workings, some of these mental techniques, some of these mental cues you can envision before embarking upon a quest of knowledge and wisdom. And the mental image you can see in the north when you're working with the air pyramid is a sky blue pair of scales. And then when you have these four mental images in place, so in all four corners, then you can envision lines drawing up so that you're ultimately sitting in a pyramid and that pyramid is then imbued with 
the energy of air. So all of these different qualities, so you have clarity, inspiration, joy and understanding. These are the things you try to focus on. And you can even try to envision that you're breathing in these energies into your body. And then you try to hold on to that energy. And then when you've done it for enough times, so if you meditate every day, do this meditation, and then later on you can instantly invoke these energies for whenever you need them. So if you need to be on in a good mood, you invoke joy. Or if you want to study or something, you can invoke the other clarity and understanding or inspiration, everything like that. So it's about invoking a state of mind to make you better able to deal with a certain situation. So that is how to use this magic. Now again, I'm no expert in it. I have only just started with elemental magic. So maybe we'll make an episode in a year or so with uh, an elemental magic progress update in addition to my training updates. So now we'll go to a short music break and then we'll be back to discuss the fire elemental pyramid and then the water and earth ones as well. And I will say farewell to my esteemed YouTube and Odyssey audience or wherever you might listen to this. If you would like to listen to all episodes, you can sign up. You can become an esteemed enjoyer of the greatest podcast. You can find the first link in the description box below. And for everyone who's already subscribed, I will talk to you after the music break. <laughs> 